All right, so we've got some more discard brand bond review here, and this is a mirror matchup against a rivaling discard brand. He has a bit of a bit of a tweak on his deck, which is pretty interesting. But I'm still gonna win. Spoilers, even though I did go first, and the big reason why that is is because of a point that I cover a little bit later in this game, where I save my very less my very best cards for last. Now I did somewhat already covered this in the previous excuse me, in the previous discard brand video, but it helps to see, you know, another example of this in a different situation if you can, because so much of this deck I feel revolves around doing such a thing because it's so dang good at deck thinning that when you get to the very last of round three, you're bound to win because you have just simply played more cards than your opponent has. You've gone through more of your deck than your opponent has. You will see it. And funnily enough, he uses Avalak, which is a bit strange. I wonder actually if that's a, like, counter pick. Uh, Tech tech pick rather against uh, against rivaling discard brands. So every time he goes up against discard brand, he wins. Maybe, but then he'd kind of hurt himself, right? So we'd have to change his deck to not use uh, these guys. I think it's interesting though. Or maybe it's just he had an open gold slot. <laughs> he shoved Avalak in there. <laughs> That's not a bad idea either. But I think it's pretty interesting because if you can get, yeah, see, he's not playing a strictly discard brand. So this may very well just be a, a counter, which is nice. Or it's cool. It's interesting. Although I'm not so sure about these uh, these warrior guys. Because, you know, every time you run into a, a, a discard brand, they're going to be running Coral. And Coral can just shut this down entirely. Like, no contest. Just completely shut down and ruin his value. And it's not just this one value. It's the value you get over three rounds. And you know, you don't want to run three of these because each each individual, uh, it, <laughs> I keep using diminishing returns, but that's exactly what happens with that card. You get diminishing returns based on each uh, each extra one that you play. You want to be able to discard the first one out of your hand and put, uh, discard it into your graveyard and then bring it back in the first round so you can bring it back in rounds two and three. And then by the end, it's, you know, uh, 20 strength or something crazy like that. Super incredible finisher, but also really, really weak against monsters. Or any any uh, deck that has graveyard hate, like um, uh, Emir Spies, is pretty pretty prevalent. So actually, that's kind of like kind of a bad card <laughs> in this meta right now. But it's interesting. I like the kind of bruteness of it. Kind of like it's not necessarily like a go fish card. Like if you can't answer this, I win. But it, it, it it's kind of like one step below that. Where this is a very powerful card that does happen to have its counters. And it's kind of the opposite of what uh, like a John Calvate Spies deck kind of plays like. They generally try and go for flexibility and outmaneuvering the opponent in more mac in a more macro sense as opposed to these more single brute strength plays. And this is the other end of that spectrum where it's big brute strength plays, but it doesn't have very much flexibility and it's relatively easy to counter. So I think it's interesting to see both sides of that spectrum. Like I, I really want to, I kind of want to set up like a game where I, um, I have one deck that's in entirely versatile John Covey Spies, and then another deck that's entirely like brute strength force kind of cards with no particular counters in each deck, just kind of like the most, uh, the most, uh, you can swing that pendulum, in other words. But anyway, that's on that, that's you know, just me rant, uh, going on inside. I kind of made a bit of a mistake here. I put my brand leader on the melee row. I shouldn't have done that. I keep forgetting, uh, this is the second point, I keep forgetting that I shouldn't be doing that. I should put it on the range or in the siege. Uh, so I'm getting punished by it pretty hard because he's playing all these whale harpooners. And the whale harpooners, if you don't know, they will pull a unit to that row. And based on how many units are on the row, it will damage it by that amount. So it's pretty insane. And actually, that's exactly why I, I was complaining in the previous video about why whale harpooners are in this deck. Like, one, it's not very good against swarm monsters. And it's not very good against most other decks. So why is it even in here? And it's, it seems like it's strictly because it's to counter the discard brand. Because discard brand heavily favors uh the melee row and so you can just keep pulling units there and then you have swipe to hit all of those and you all you have your own little anti-counter or uh uh not necessarily anti-counter what's the word i'm looking for but uh fix or heal i guess to heal up against this whatever gets hit and then you can even arm it up a little bit to protect against the swipe so this deck is like i kind of thought it wasn't all that great like in the in general and then going up into, into discard brand it's like oh my god this deck is so incredible like like every piece of it is so it fits together so well it's really nice it was already powerful but going up against like a discard brand it's just a it's a battle of who can use their cards to the best of their ability 
also really interesting that he's using uh, this war cry. But seeing how I can just kill it as soon as it goes over here, it leads me, leads me, excuse me, leads me in a pretty good spot. Granted, he can revive it, but I'm not too worried about that. If he uses his revive to just hit these, that's exactly what I want. Because then he's not reviving his skirmisher or whatever it's called. I call both of these cards skirmishers. And you know, these cards these are cards that have been in play since like <laughs> since the clothes faded. I still can't remember their name. I don't often hover over the cards very much. I just kinda look at it and and uh you know recognize it by its picture and strength and faction. And you know, what it does and all that. So going first, I needed to make sure to, of course, to be over strength. Uh, I kind of overplayed a little bit, but it's not too big of a deal. I was kind of waiting for a swipe that he never played, though. I think if he did have a swipe, he would probably would have won that round. So obviously going one card down to going into round two, it's, it's fine, but it's not. It's not great. It relies on me pulling out a bit more than he possibly has. Now this is a really good uh, situation for me. I had Siri or Cirrus rather uh, set up in such a way that he she would revive right off of the cards that get brought back every round anyway. So now I have a pretty high strength total that he can't exactly pass. So in uh, in seeing that, I believe I just do nothing. Is that right? This would be a good opportunity for open pass. Yeah, that's right. Okay, that's exactly what I do. This is a really good opportunity for an open pass because of a couple of reasons. One, uh, if you're trying round two, if you're going first, is all about trying to bleed out your opponent and coal your hand. Now, in doing so, I could coal my hand a little bit, but I'm not actually bleeding my opponent out. In fact, they're going to be in control of the round since I'm in ahead in points. If you're trying to force your opponent to in round two, if you're trying to bleed your opponent out, you want them to overplay and above and be above your point total. Because as soon as you stop playing cards, since you're going first, they'll just go second and use whatever they have to pass your total. And it's very rarely going to be in a situation in which you're going to force like two cards more. You In the worst case scenario, they even pass this in one card and then you're stuck and you basically got nothing. So you have to be really careful about this. This is a really good point total. That's enough to draw two cards out. Or in my relatively unlucky situation, just one. <laughs> but see, if I had played a card right there. No, actually, never mind. I was going to say if I had played a card right there, I would have uh, lost my card advantage. But that's not the case. Uh, because I had all these cards already here, then I don't. But otherwise, it would have been a little bit tricky. Still, I forced out one of, one of his revives, which is nice. And you can probably already see where this game is going to be coming to. He used to revive that, that unit twice now. And I have a Cirrus as my last card. I, I have the last say in the game. So that's uh, that's the that's, the, that's what this, this whole video is you know going towards. And I also made a mistake right here. Let me back this up a little bit. Okay, so I'm looking to see what I want to drop out of my hand. I don't really see much use out of this card since he's already played three Harpoon. Harpooners. One, that's a mistake because he can just revive more. Two, he still possibly has a swipe. So I should not have gotten rid of this card. I kind of just lost. I kind of thought, eh, you know, it's it's a. I got it in my mind that it's just a healing unit instead of an armor plus the seven strength plus agile. So I kind of got caught up in that and I put this back in my deck, even though I still had the Raiders left in my deck, which is uh, drawing into him is such a huge mistake because then it doesn't get thinned out. And I can revive back into the Warmongers to get rid of it in my deck. So this is just one really big mistake. I lost roughly 4, 11. I lost 11. No, no, just 7. Yeah, I lost 7. 7 plus armor. He plays a drought. A little bit unlucky. Yeah, this, guy, <laughs> this guy's played like drought. And like Avalak and some other weird cards. It was an interesting deck though. I liked it. It's a whole lot like it. I know it's like it, it comes off so bad that I'm like, you know, trying to it almost seems like I'm gloating that I beat the stack or something like that. But that's not the case at all. In fact, a lot of my games, I'll just surrender at the very end uh, when I'm playing this deck against like, you know, non meta decks because I feel really, really gross. Destroy! I know it's 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 like I'm such a bad person. And this isn't casual, too, because I pretty much only play casual these days. Uh, and I feel so bad playing a meta deck like this because I know it's just kind of grossly, not necessarily overpowered, but uh, kind of stale and, you know, strictly powerful. 
and there's the second thing oh this is a big point but to finish the previous point and yeah i do actually just concede a lot of the time whenever my opponent is playing a non-meta deck and i'll just throw it at the end so they do we get to play it out we kind of get to see each other's deck and, uh, and i get to get my experience but they they get to get the win they get to get you know the two rounds they get to get the extra ore and all that stuff that good stuff so just to kind of salvage myself a little bit here Unless it was a hard fought win, then I'll take that win. But if it's kind of like obviously the opponent is uh, quote unquote un outclassed, I'll just give it up for fun. Because you know, in casual, it doesn't matter. Uh, so I'm, this is a really big point. So you played the second weather, right? And I have a, his name is Gremist, right? And I have a Gremist that I can't decoy, but I can revive with Restore. So the next game, my next play. It cannot be serious. This is another instance of breaking your pan. It cannot be serious. It cannot be restore. Or it can't be serious because I want to uh, uh, artifact compression his warrior, whatever it is, his skirmisher. I can't restore because I want to restore Gremis back so I can get rid of this weather. And I don't want to use Dora Gray because this will be too strength and I'll get hit first by the, the Ragnarok. And I, w I don't want that to happen. Uh, conversely, I could use... Ekimara and put it in the uh, melee row. That actually wouldn't be such a bad solution. And just eat eat either Gremist or Dora Gray. That's actually not a bad solution. Actually, that was the best solution. Wait, that was the best solution I could have gone for. Okay, anyway. So, okay, so we're discovering things. We're learning. That's what these mod reviews are all about. So I go ahead and play Priestess of Rhea and leave it up to a 50-50 chance. Actually, I'm not 100% sure how this mechanic works, but I thought it worked as uh, if you have two units of the same strength, then it'll hit the leftmost strength unit first. But I'm actually not certain about that. Just checking the graveyard, see what's going on here. Anything that can help me, potentially. Uh... It took me surprisingly a while to come up with the plan too. No, 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 never mind. I was looking to see what I could use Priestess Frey on. That's what I was talking about. I go ahead and use it on uh, this guy. And I would have, if I had used Dora Gray instead, I wouldn't have given him this five or six strength, uh, free six strength. So that was kind of a mistake. I not only gave him a free six strength, but I also, <laughs> I also uh, set it up so that my, it's a 50-50 chance, effectively, in my mind right now, since I don't know how the mechanic works, of getting my actual Gremis to die. And if the Gremis dies any later, then I'm just kind of hemorrhaging points too too much. And then obviously, I can't put Whale Harpooner on the uh, Siege Row because it'll get hit versus, by Ragnarok, and I couldn't put it on the Rage Row because then I'm just hemorrhaging another two extra points. Luckily, I don't even have to wait for chance. He just kills it automatically. Ah, and doesn't actually get to find out what which one Ragnarok would hit. It's unfortunate. I'm sure Swim knows how that works. I need to look up his videos again. I've really been slacking and watching uh, other people play lately. And that's an interesting little mechanic. I'm not really sure how First Light works. And the description of the card doesn't say anything about healing your units, but I obviously just got healed by three here. One, two, three. It's interesting. It's actually something that, speaking of Swim, he actually commented on previously uh, on a Gwendolyn podcast, I think. At least I think it was him. He was talking about how... Weather clears are too low tempo. Are they all you're doing is clearing the weather and you're not getting any much, you're not getting much more tempo other than that? And how he thought that was kind of an issue. At least I, I'm paraphrasing. I could be I could be off, but it's been like two months since I think I listened to that one. So it's kind of unfortunate for me. He's playing out these huge tempo cards. I kind of make a mistake here. Uh, I'm just making a mistake. All the See, that's the, that's the great thing. Even if I didn't come into this video with like a big like topic to think about, uh, I think that's actually now that I think about it, that's maybe where I can just kind of direct these water reviews to go. I just try and play out my videos and then see where I make mistakes and try and improve upon them, or just kind of discuss like various theories or you know playmaking tactics or strategies that you can think about. Yeah, I think that's what I'll do. I still only do them like every other day, but otherwise. At least I can still keep these uh, relatively densely packed with information. So what was that mistake I was talking about? So I want, I kind of got blinded by the idea of damaging this as much as possible, but I kind of set myself up to get less value just in case he never actually plays another pirate captain or if he doesn't revive his, you know, by this point, 16th strength uh, skirmisher or whatever it is. So I weakened my Saris's overall power by doing that. Instead, I should have moved the 
the golem to the ranger instead and hit that. Play Ciceris. Or Coral. Why do I keep calling him Ciceris? It's Coral. I, do not words. I believe I go for Wyvern, which is 9 points as opposed to the 6 or 7 of the other one. Hit that. I would have killed that if I had... No, actually it wouldn't have. Never mind. It doesn't matter if it dies anyway. Forget that. So he revives his 16 strength. Come on. What's it called? Come on. Come on. Yeah, it is called Skirmisher. Okay, good. It's called Skirmisher. So he's ahead of me by what? 4, 7, 27 points? It's quite a lot. No, that's not 27. I don't know how to math. <laughs> I don't know how to math. Whatever. It's a lot. And I can just effectively get rid of just about all of it with my last card in Coral. Now, I could have used Coral earlier on this 15 strength Pirate Captain, but I probably would have lost because of it. So I made sure to save it for the very end. I knew that the, that was his game plan. I knew he wanted to revive that with his very last card. And because I had card advantage, because I didn't play any cards in round two, and you know didn't get caught up in any shenanigans in which I got outpaced uh, too quickly, I was able to have the very last say, which allowed me to play Coral. That's a big thing about going uh, or winning the first round. It allows you to have the last say in round three, usually. So long as you don't go two cards down. And that's that. All right, thanks for watching. Oh, one thing you may recognize that there is desktop audio. There is game audio this time around. I finally fixed my system uh, to record the audio of the game. Yeah, record the audio of the game while I, I'm still able to play music because I can't do these without playing music. I just kind of get rambly and overly rambly and all that. Anyway, that's it. Expect game audio. Big new feature, Kings of the Cree is now playing game audio. Compete with that, Mega Mogwai. <laughs> All right, for real though. Thanks for watching.